Well, the balls have been one of the best investigations that I've ever done with the toddlers because it's so hands-on. It's so sensory-oriented. There was just room for all of the developmental domains. An investigation is an in-depth study of a topic of interest to children, teachers, and or families. And children construct meaning out of various topics through teacher facilitation and guidance. Teachers brought with them different ideas that they thought their children would be interested in exploring based on different things that they've heard in their classrooms. Somebody brought up balls and I thought it was a good idea. The children know about balls. They're aware of balls. It's in their daily environment. If you could bounce it and roll it mm -hmm. and, and you could throw it, mm -hmm. but just not in the house, outside. Right. And this allowed them to look just a little bit closer at something that's an everyday object in their environment. I have to admit that I was a bit fearful. I said, okay, how can we safely bring balls into the classroom and know that they're not just going to be thrown constantly? At the beginning, we were kind of nervous about balls because we really thought, could we do this long term? We spent a lot of time webbing. And once we uh, create the web together, each classroom team goes back and um, decides what they want to focus on with their classroom. We did a whole um, key experience around creating a bowling alley. I just asked them very casually, what do you think we could use for pins? I had a child who said, let's use books, and another one who said cars, and another one who said trees. And I actually have little tree blocks. So we tested them all out, and they were really excited to set it up and decide on their own. One child would set up the pins, the other would bowl, and keeping score and whatnot. We knew that with balls, there were going to be a lot of opportunities for science and physics. Children were able to plan and build their own ramps, and then they were able to compare how far certain balls went. We rolled further. Did they hit the wall? Yeah, they hit it. Did the marble hit the wall too? No. Yeah. We did a lot with changing the height of ramps and seeing if that affects the speed of their balls and if the shape of the ball affects the speed. Do you think that the marble rolled faster or the golf ball? One part about the ball investigation that I liked is that it was active. We coordinated a visit from the Eastern um, Connecticut State University women's basketball team. The children were able to ask them questions and they did a demonstration. They talked about, you know, bouncing and passing and the, the things that the children were most excited about was dribbling, but also how high these, um, these team members were able to throw the ball up. So then we thought, all right, well, this is this is good. We, we have an idea of some different things, different kinds of games that they could play with balls. Let's see if they can invent their own game. In my game, you you, you gotta, gotta try a roll of spin, but, 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 but we gotta watch out because there's a booby trap. And they were able to explain all the details of their game. Only, only, only five people can play. Only five people can play. Okay. It was interesting because they understand, I think, more now, like materials. You need materials to make a game. You have to have rules. What are the rules? What do you have to try to do with the ball? You have to do this. What happens if the ball pops out of there? You have to put it back in. You have to put it back in? I mean, can you? We did a lot of shared writing. We did a, um, a bounce chart that they filled in. So we did some experimenting, hypothesizing. Do you think that this type of ball will bounce? Why or I not? We found a lot of fiction books. There's a book called Hit the, Hit the Ball Duck by Jez Alvaro. And there's onomatopoeia all throughout the whole book. Like crash and whoosh. We talked about what solid was, what hollow was, and every week, we brought a new ball to, um, to circle, and we predicted what's going to be inside this ball. So we were able to cut it right there, and then we were able to compare the outside versus the inside, if the textures were the same, if they were different, and what was inside that ball. There was a lot of opportunities for children to, to experience art through, through balls. We did a painting activity. It was called the reverse painting um, because we actually put the paint on the table itself. We had them each choose a ball and we purposely made all the balls very different. Look around at all the balls. Do they look and feel the same yeah, or different? We had them push the, the balls through the paint to make tracks and we talked about the ways that the different balls created different tracks. Does yours have spikes on it like, like Jalen's? No. Or is yours smooth? 
Mine is smooth. Smooth. I wonder if that's why they're my making hand. different prints. Feel my hand. We gave them an opportunity to choose a different ball on another day and compare what, what would be the same if we used a smooth ball with next time. If, so they were able to see the similarities and differences between the tracks. Does your picture look the same as that picture we did last week? Mm, that ball, it looks like that ball, huh? We took a beach ball, small beach ball, and we took yarn and we dipped it in liquid starch and wrapped it around the ball. And we waited a couple days and we let the air out of the beach ball and then it was just the shape but there was nothing on the inside and we have it hanging in the room. We did making balls towards the end of the investigation because they had all this prior knowledge of how they wanted their ball to look like. We had various materials for the children to choose from. Aluminum foil, rubber bands, Play-Doh, um, tissue paper. They were able to test their balls and compare them. Look, it's just standing there. You're right. Why does that happen? Uh, Why is it just standing there? It's not round like mine or something. Right, it wasn't round. What is it? And then a lot of children realize that they're after they were able to look at their ball and realize it wasn't like the other balls, it wasn't a perfect sphere like the other balls. It's gonna slide. It's gonna slide. Look, at it's sliding. Why do you think it's gonna slide? Why do you think it might slide? But they knew right away just by looking at it, oh, it's not gonna roll. To be able to see them know right away because of the shape it was that it wasn't gonna roll was a big step from where we started and we assumed everything was gonna roll. What do you think? That one don't roll. This one doesn't roll. Okay, let's let's look let's look at Jeremiah's. I just wanted to do that for ours. We're gonna leave these look here. Look What do you think? What happens? It just stands there. It just stands there. Why does it just stand there? I think that they have learned so much from the properties of balls and really how they move and that the texture of that ball is going to affect that the way that it moves. It surprised me that we could investigate balls for as long as we did. We didn't have any problems because there was always something else. There was always another direction you can go into. There was, you know, ways to incorporate literacy and gross motor and fine motor and bring it into blocks and math and science. I mean, it literally covered every developmental domain. We have all learned from this investigation that a topic as simple as a ball can have so many possibilities for exploration. We spent a good three months on this topic of investigation. You can really spend a long time doing an in-depth study on a topic and keep children excited about, about learning. not to be scared of something at first, just to sit and plan and talk to your teammates and you really just like get this conversation going and get these ideas moving and really to go with the children's interest. Honestly, I've learned a lot about my kids. There were so many open-ended questions that we could ask that they could discover the answers to on their own. I think when they look at balls now, they look at details, whereas before it was a ball. But now they might think about, oh, it's a ball, oh, and it's got a different texture, oh, and I wonder how far, what it's made of, I wonder how high it can bounce, I wonder how far it can roll. As they grow older, they might learn to look at things in their environment and ask those questions about all kinds of things. Mm -hmm.